Uh, we're starting out with this image right here. It's a, it's a really nice scene of these mountains right here. Sky's a little bit boring, so I think I'll do a sky replacement. It looks a little bit flat and dull. So I want to bring some contrast back into it, but still maintain some of the mistiness back in the mountains and cut some of that blue cast down a little bit. Uh, so we're starting out here, as I said, and we're going to end up looking like this. And I'll show you all the edits I have done to get it to look like this. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the starting point right here. Uh, I'm going to take, this is uh, the layer I'm working on, the base layer right here. So let's just take the adjustments amount the whole way up and I'll show you what I did first. So I'm coming into the Essentials tab. And under Light, the first thing I did was um, I gave it a little bit of Smart Contrast. And I love how this Smart Contrast works. It really protects the blacks so they don't get all crushed and things like that. But it adds contrast very intelligently. And I really love that slider. And secondly, uh, I increased the blacks by bumping the blacks down to like a minus 24, which really helped out to add a little bit more contrast in here. Now, I know it looks exceptionally blue right here. So the next thing I did was went to the color. Um, tool here. Forgive me if I call them filters because I can never get my head wrapped around calling things tools or filters, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this on and I'll show you what I did here. I used this slider here, Remove Color Cast, and that really helped the image out. I uh, got rid of some of that bluish color cast. It was just super predominant there. And also I went into the advanced settings under the blue tab right here and I pulled back on the blue saturation and I also decreased the uh, luminance of the blue a little bit because I thought that really helped it out. So I'm, I'm liking what, what we have so far here. And then another great tool, if you watch my videos in the past, you know how much I love the AI Enhance. So I pretty much use it all the time in all my edits. So I went to AI Enhance and added a little bit of AI accent to it. Uh, you know, here it is without it. And I bumped it up to like a 30. And I thought that really, really helped it out. And after that, I went to another favorite of mine, AI Structure, because I thought I want to bring out a little bit more structure in, in these mountains and things here. And it does a really great job of doing that. So let's turn that on so we can see what that's done. Okay, so that's looking really nice. So it just adds a little bit extra structure. I didn't want to go too far and too crazy on that. And then the next step was I went to the uh, landscape because I figured inside of landscape we have this uh, dehaze uh, slider in here, which I thought it's going to be a good one to use to remove some of the haze in this image here. So let's turn that on, landscape enhancer. And as you can see there, it, it does a really nice job. And I took the dehaze up to 34. And I also use golden hour. Now, the only reason I use golden hour on this was because I thought not because this is a golden hour image, but I thought it would kind of counteract against some of that blue tone. So I'm at a 38. So let's pull this back so you can see. See right there. And I bumped that up to like a 38. And I just like the result. You know, again, it's not a golden hour image, but I think it really helped there. And then after that, I went to the creative tab because I thought, man, this sky is so boring up here. So I went to the creative tab and went up to AI sky replacement and I replaced the sky. And let's turn that on and you can see here what that does. Takes it a second here to go. There it is right there. Um, so I made some adjustments in here. I love this atmospheric haze. I bumped this up to a 69. Uh, took the sky exposure up a little bit because it's nice and light up in here. And I played with the horizon blending because some of these clouds are bleeding into the mountains. But I thought... You know, for creative reasons, I don't care if the uh, sky goes over the mountains a little bit because I'm making a more of an artistic image here. And I think it looks really natural the way these clouds are coming in here. But I bumped the horizon up or I blended the horizon more in with the uh, natural sky to the image here, which was nothing but a white, boring sky. OK, and I moved the horizon position just a little bit. And then I went to another one of my favorites, and that is under the Pro section, and that's Advanced Contrast. And here, I love this tool, and I did an entire video on the Advanced Contrast, how this tool works, and it's really amazing. So let's go ahead and turn this on, and you'll see the difference here with the Advanced Contrast. So there it is there. And uh, so I work with the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. But the secret here to making this uh, AI contrast work for you is finding the right balance point for each one of your tones, highlights, midtones, and shadows.
Now, looking at this image here, studying it, and I really like to take a pause and really study the image. I thought this Horizon Mountains, these Horizon Mountains here, were still a little bit on the blue side for me, but I didn't want to take any blue off of the sky here. So what I did was I went and added a new layer, and uh, this layer right here called Reduce Blue Horizon Reduce Blue Horizon Mountains, okay? I renamed it because it's always good to rename your layer so you can know what you've done. So let's go ahead and click that on. And let's see, what did I do there? Um, I went to Color under the Essentials tab. All right, and let's turn that on. Okay. And so I just reduced that a little bit there, as you can see. So let me toggle this off again. See the blue in there, and I'll toggle it on here. And what I did was I went to the blue tab and just pulled that saturation back on the blues, okay? And then I used the layer mask just to mask it onto these mountains here. So let us uh, let me just show you the mask. So I'm just going to click on Edit Mask. And you got to click on Brush here in order to get to this little eye right here. So when I click this... So you can see, I just uh, used the brush and painted over that area right there, okay? I'm just going to click Done to get rid of that. And so that reduced some of that blue on these uh, horizon mountains up here. But I maintained the nice blue up in the sky, and I'm happy with everything so far. The next thing I did was came up to the uh, layer icon right here and added a new layer. Now, I really didn't have to add a layer. I could have kept working on that same layer. But I did add this layer just to keep myself organized, okay? And I named this layer Finishing Touches. So let's go ahead and turn this layer on right here. And I just did a few more things to this edit right here. So the first thing I did was... Uh, I came to um, another one of my favorites, which I used already under Essentials. And that would be AI Enhance, okay? So let's go ahead and turn this on. And all I did here really was use the AI Sky Enhancer just to, just to work in the sky a little bit. It kind of darkened it up a little bit in the top here just to kind of, it closes off the top of the image. And I really like what it did there. So I was really happy with, with that result there. And again, let me uh, just take the slider, take it the whole way off. And as you can see, I just built that up like that. And I, and I just really like that. I think it really works nice. And I just love this artificial intelligence in this AI Enhance. It's really amazing. And after that, I thought, well, you know what? I want to maintain a little bit of drama to this image and a little bit. I like this little uh, fog up in these mountains here. So I wanted to be able to try to enhance that fog a little bit. So I thought, well, let's experiment. So I went to the creative section here. And I added a uh, tool in here called Mystical. And I've used this in the past in some of my videos and I've showed you, which I really love this tool a lot. So let's go ahead and turn this on so you can see what it does. So it just adds a nice dreamy look to the image here, okay? And let me open up the advanced settings. Now, I didn't do anything under the advanced settings here, but I did, I did pull the amount up to 47 in the shadows to 25. Let me double click shadows. No, I didn't. That's where it actually defaults at on the shadows. All right, so I didn't touch the shadows. Let's uh, go ahead and pull this amount back. So uh, that was at 47. So I want you to see the difference. So just move this slider up and look at that. Isn't that really cool? It just adds that nice little bit of drama in there. And like I said, it really helps out some of this fog up in these mountains, maintain that fogginess. And I just like the overall... Um, effect that it's given me. Now in the past I've used the layer mask and added a luminosity mask to the uh, mystical filter and that's a really nice tip to do. In this particular image I don't really need it but if, if you've seen some of my videos in the past you'll see that I do that sometimes. I'll come under uh, edit mask and click on luminosity and add a luminosity mask to it. So I didn't really need it here so I'm not even going to show you that because it's not going to really mean much to you. Okay, so that was the mystical filter. Okay, and then the last thing I did was under the uh, pro panel right here. Got brave and went to the pro panel. Okay, and inside of here I used the adjustable gradient. Love the adjustable gradient. And basically what I did was, first let me turn it on here for you so you can see. I went ahead and uh, clicked on set orientation and I found the point that I liked. And you just, all you do is just take this and you just drag it to where you want. And this is the graduated field uh, 
where uh, it splits here in the center and it graduates up this way and it graduates down this way from the center line. Now, the cool thing about this tool is, is you have a top and a bottom, okay? So on the top, which we're set at now, as you can see, I took it, the exposure to a minus seven. I just wanted to darken the sky up a little bit. I just wanted to balance this image out a little bit because I felt, let's toggle this off so you can see. There's the before and here's the after. See how it just balances out a little bit. And so I took the exposure down to a minus seven on the top and then on the bottom, let's click on bottom. I took the exposure up because I felt it was a little dark down here. So I wanted to pull that exposure up. And that is basically it. Now, let's come to the split screen because I love the split screen here. So if you click right here, we can see where we've come from. Isn't that amazing? Look how, like, it just looks flat and it looks um, hardly any contrast in it. And it's all kind of blue. But then we turned it into this. And it didn't have a sky or it just had a bald white sky, which was kind of boring to me. Let's click on the split screen here. Now, let me click the eyeball so you can see here's the before and here's the after. So I'm really happy with that. I think it turned out really nice. I just noticed I have like three dust spots, one right here, one right here, and one right here. There may be more, but that's all I see right now. But we can go ahead and take care of that. Let's just come up here. See this? Uh, these icons here, the ruler and the pencil for canvas? Click that and click on erase and it prepares the canvas here so it takes a few seconds here all right and now you have this tool right here and you can see the size is set at 32. now you can increase the size with your uh, left and right bracket keys just by left and right i'm going to put one right here just give it a click here's the other dust spot right here i'm going to click it and the third dust spot was right here i'm going to click it after you've done that you click on erase and we'll see what it does Yep, like magic, they are gone. And then all you have to do is click Done. And so there we go. Here's the before. And here's the after. I always like to do this after I'm done with an image and uh, just uh, type your F key on your keyboard. And that takes you into what I would call a presentation mode. So you can really study your, study your image and see if you're really happy with it. Puts it up there all by itself. Well, there you go. That was my edit for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.